items. Uh, Eric Eric Webb from AOPA brought up the sweepstakes 170. Um, last week, and, and got to fly around in that for a couple of hours. I have been working on a video of that uh, just to kind of show you the outside, show it flying around, show you the interior, just a quick video of that. And we also pulled the Chief out of the guy's hangar that I bought it from. It's now in our hangar. Um, so that should get annual this week, and once that's annual, I'll get a lot of video on that airplane and out, out flying with that video. But uh, today's dedicated to just crosswind takeoff and landings. I emphasize takeoffs because I see a lot of people saw today, they line up on the runway, there's a really strong crosswind, and there's zero uh, crosswind correction in, on the takeoff. And, you know, even in a, in a, nose, a nose wheel airplane, um, you can kind of get away with it, but still, I, you know, I saw the airplane just kind of skidding and skimming across the runway, and they take off, and then they drift into the trees. It's really important when you line up on the runway, go ailerons full into the wind. You don't have to worry about having too much aileron because you're not, there's zero airflow over the flight control. So start as, ag as aggressive as you can, aileron all the way into the wind, stick all the way back because you're going to have zero airflow not only over the ailerons but over the rudder. You know, one, two, three, four, five, neutral stick, keep the aileron full into the, into the wind, but you can, you know, go neutral on the elevator, let the tail come up, and then take off. Uh, and then on final approach, when it's really windy, grab into the wind to maintain that extended center line. And then when you're about to touch down, put the airplane in a side slip. And again, the difference between a forward slip and a side slip. Side slip, you're, the nose of the runway, or the nose of the airplane is basically tracking the flight path, where a forward slip, the nose is off to either side. Across from landing, you want to do a side slip. Uh, and then again, on takeoff, you want aileron full into, into the wind, and don't be afraid if that, um, if that downwind wheel is going to lift up, that's fine. You can roll down the runway with, and that's ultimately what you want. Roll down the runway with, you know, want the downwind wheel up and the uh, upwind wheel down, and then take off and then crab into the wind. And when you're coming in for a landing, same thing. You crab into the wind, put the airplane in a side slip. You want to make sure, and again, think of it this way. The wind's coming from this way, right aileron, left rudder, the wind's coming from the right. Land on the upwind wheel first, kind of ride it out, then get the downwind main down, make sure you're stabilized, aileron into the wind, and then fly the tail wheel on the ground and stick all the way back and into the wind. Um, so again, it's important to, to not only uh, have that aileron correction in on takeoff and then landing, but make sure you have it in on the rollout too. I've seen a lot of people kind of get lazy and they take it out on the rollout and that's the most important part especially in a tailwheel airplane is the rollout that's where you're going to ground loop you're not going to ground loop in the air you're not going to ground loop as soon as you touch down you're going to ground loop on the rollout so make sure you have the aileron into the wind um, and i've done it before where i almost had too much aileron into the wind and then the downwind wheel came up and no big deal i just took a little bit out but um i'd almost rather have too much correction but uh, anyway all right so um Enough talking, let's just get into the videos. All right, so stick it to the wind. I like to start off pull deflection and kind of adjust as needed. I'd rather be uh, proactive than reactive. All right, here we go. Back on center line, and then just crab it to the wind, maintain center line. I'm going to carry a little extra power here and plan on a wheel landing because I want to drive it onto the runway. I want to make sure I've got enough control authority with the amount of wind that I have. A little sink there, add a little bit of power, work at the feet. comes down, aileron into the wind, stick back at that tail steer, and then all the way into the wind. And then I'll do another one here. All right, here's the view from the outside. You can see I'm crabbing into the wind. As I get over the threshold, I'll put it in a side slip. So left aileron, right rudder, land on the upwind wheel first, and then bring the downwind main wheel on the 
pavement and then stick back ailerons into the wind and then here I went for a, another one and took off again but look at the ailerons into the wind right there and here's the view from the gear left main which is the upper wheel down first and then I bring down the downward wheel there you go and here's a three-point crosswind land Again, be ready to go around, be ready to add power if you need to, be proactive with your feet. Don't let the wind, you know, push you around. I'll do a three-point landing here to kind of show you what that looks like. Just keep the airplane flying, keep the airplane flying, keep it flying, keep it flying, flying, and then... Here's what it looks like on the grass. You can see it sticks all the way back. I land on the upwind wheel first and the tail wheel and keep the ailerons into the wind. And also when I first got the airplane, I was terrified of any amount of wind. Uh, so I would incrementally go out when it was just above my comfort zone. And that's how you practice and get good is if I, you know, I put myself on a limit, okay, no more than three knot crosswind. And then there was, you know, three or four knots and I'd go and then I put my limit at five. Got good at that, and at five six, and I'm up to the point now where, you know, it's if the airplane can handle it, I'm pretty comfortable doing it. Uh, but again, work your way up to that. That's <clears throat> that's what I did. It worked out really well, and believe me, you, you'll want to do that because a lot of times the winds like today are a lot stronger than forecasted. And if you get stuck somewhere and you come back, I mean, of course you never have to go, but you know, it, are you going to ground the airplane 100 miles away because there's a 10-knot crosswind at home? Probably not. So just something to become proficient in.